The truth is we can wire our brains, which is everything that his book is about. We can wire our brains to believe anything. We can create any narrative, any story in our mind that we want. And that starts to ingrain itself into our everyday thinking. And it's our everyday thinking that creates our reality. So three things that you need to be doing now to start bolstering your confidence, feeling happier are this. Number one, Dr. Richard O'Connor gives us the secret to how to be happy, confident, and have more friends in his awesome book, Rewire. And I'm gonna read from you from page 20 what he shares that I specifically believe can help you to live a happier, more confident life where you have better relationships and greater success in any area of your life. So on page 20, he says, listen to this. The fact is that most happy, confident people are slightly delusional. The first time I read that, I was kind of like, yeah, that sounds about right to me. <laughs> he goes on to talk about how happiness, as we generally define it, depends on certain optimistic or self-serving biases, and then talks about some of these biases, specifically how most people believe that they're better looking than the average person, they are smarter than the average person, they drive better than the average person, they consume alcohol or handle alcohol better than the average person, and do basically virtually everything better than the average person. And what you might know about statistics, even if you've never taken a statistics course, is that only half of the people can be above average and half the people are below average. Therefore, the majority of people cannot be above average. Nonetheless, study after study suggests that most people, the majority of people think they're above average in many things, but that's not really a problem. You see, because what he suggests is that it's this self-serving bias that actually allows us to be happier and more confident and to more easily make friends with more people. So he goes on to say later in the page, and incidentally, we tend to believe we're less influenced by these distorted beliefs than the average person is. Collectively, these beliefs are referred to as the self-serving bias. As long as this bias is not too far off base, it can lead to a happier life. Some of these beliefs become self-fulfilling prophecies that lead to good Outcomes. Here's the last thing I'll re read to you and then I'll share with you what you can be doing. More optimistic people will stay at a task longer than pessimists. More positive people have more friends. Other biases just bolster our self-esteem. So whether you're a leader or you're a parent or you're an entrepreneur trying to build a business or you're a sailor, whatever you're trying to do in your life, if you can have this self-serving bias, then you'll be more optimistic. You'll be happier. You'll be more positive to make more friends more easily because when you can see yourself in a better light when you can see the world in a better light when you can believe in a bigger better brighter future where more amazing things happen and where the past starts to fade away in the rear view mirror and the thing in front of you in that front forward windshield starts to become bigger and brighter as you move towards it life gets exciting and energizing and you feel more vibrant and alive and you feel a sense of happiness and joy that comes from looking into the future and believing it can be better from looking at yourself and where you are today and having greater self-esteem and joy because you know you can do amazing things. And the three specific things you can be doing to start working on this skill of having this self-serving bias are as follows. And by the way, you might feel like, well, how can I develop that? I mean, maybe it's just a way of being. Some people are optimistic and some people aren't. Some people see themselves as better and some don't. The truth is we can wire our brains, which is everything that his book is about. We can wire our brains to believe anything. We can create any narrative, any story in our mind that we want. And that starts to ingrain itself into our everyday thinking. And it's our everyday thinking that creates our reality. So three things that you need to be doing now to start bolstering your confidence, feeling happier are this. Number one, stop watching the news. I know it's really easy to get caught up in the news stories, or even things you're scrolling by on social media. It's very often the negative things, the destructive things, the things that are terrifying that most grab our attention. Our brains are wired to see the danger so that we can survive. And so your brain's actually doing what it's supposed to when you're scrolling and you stop on the scary news article, or when you're listening to the news and trying to figure out what things are gonna attack us next. You're wired to live there but you don't have to stay there. You don't have to watch the news. You don't have to scroll through the negative things on your social media feed. Just stop. Stop feeding your mind with the negativity, with the pessimism, with the doom and gloom that the news puts out because they know it's gonna grab your attention. And listen, 
If you truly want to become the best version of yourself, this is a requirement. Stop believing that you're going to miss out on all the important things happening in the world if you stop watching the news. What I can tell you for certain is that the things that are truly important that you need to know about, you'll find out about. I'm not telling you to go hide under a rock or live out in a place where you never see anybody with no technology and never again look at the internet. What I am suggesting is start reducing or completely eliminating on a daily basis, certainly, the news that you consume and the social media that you scroll through. You know it. It's going to make a huge difference because how often do you feel better by watching the news? How often do you feel better when you're done with an hour session of scrolling through TikTok videos that might grab your attention and make you feel that hit of dopamine, but then you get done and you're like, that was completely unfulfilling and I feel like I just wasted my life. I don't know about you, but I don't want to waste my life. And I know you have extraordinary things that you're here to do. Stop wasting your life and bringing yourself down and feeling that pessimism and that negativity by the news and the detractors that you find on social media. So again, you might be inspired by things on social media. You might be loving this video. I'm not suggesting eliminating it totally. I'm just suggesting be very cautious about what you feed your mind with. And the second thing you need to do is another stop doing. It's very often the stop doing things that actually can truly serve us most. Stop spending time I'd rather say stop investing your valuable time and energy into relationships with people that are always, always, always negative and pessimistic and sharing their doom and gloom story and their beliefs about how the world is crumbling down and everybody is completely screwed. If these people are at work and you're having lunch with them or you're on a team with them, find a way to pull yourself away from them when you don't absolutely have to be around them. If there are people in your community or at your golf club or wherever you're spending time at chess club, at the, you know, the gym that you go to, just avoid these people. Don't spend time with them if all they do is talk about the negative crud going on in their life and in the world. I'm not saying don't have empathy for people going through challenge and struggle. That's not it at all. But you know the difference between somebody that typically is a joyful, happy person and just is going through some tough times right now. And the person that just constantly wants to blab, blab, blab about the negativity of the world and the doom and gloom and the pessimism because they just feel in control when they can talk about the crap that's going on. But you become very much out of control of your mind and your thinking and your positivity when you allow them to feed their doom and gloom and crud into your mind. Be very cautious and careful with what you allow people to speak into your life Because as soon as someone says those words and they enter your ear, that means it enters your entire being and it becomes a little part of who you are. And you need to stop feeding that part and start feeding the good stuff. So with some of those relationships that just aren't good for you and you know they're not good for you, make an intentional effort now. You owe it to yourself today and to your future and to your family to no longer settle for taking in that negativity and that pessimism because you deserve a better life. You deserve better. You deserve positivity and joy and love and compassion and the high vibe life that you're meant to live. And I'm simply suggesting that if these people truly need help, help them get the help they need. If they truly need someone to listen to some things that they're going through that are challenges and they have no one else to listen to, be a friend and listen. But if all they're doing is just speaking negativity and pessimism all the time, eliminate those conversations and that energy drain from your life. The third and final thing you can do is a start doing, here we go, which is start feeding your mind with helpful, inspirational, positive, optimistic content. Start getting around people that speak life into you, that speak encouragement to you, that speak inspiration and joy and love and compassion into your life and bring good, positive energy to you and to your family. You can read great books like Rewire. You can read great books like Attract Your Potential, which is my book. You can read all kinds of books and find great videos like this. I've got more videos. You can check out this video if you want to find out the top life-changing books I recommend for you this year. And I'll link some of those books in the description. And I also love to hear from other people like you. Do you have a most life-changing book that you might add to this list? Tell me in the comments below. What's a life-changing book that you'd recommend I read or start to learn from as I'm working to feed my mind as well. So you've got to make time every single day to feed your mind with positive, encouraging, 
inspirational content, whether videos, podcasts, books, conversations with friends and family or coworkers or teammates who are just helping to lift you up to feel great. And if you want to continue to stay positive and encouraged with great energy, go and watch this video next where I'll continue to help you along your journey so you can stay fueled up and fired up to do the amazing work that you're called here to do and to live an extraordinary life. And my friend, just keep going.